Hey guys, this is a level two 90 minute class. It's going to be led by John. I will be practicing. So uh, you know, get out what you need and hopefully you'll get in what you need. I'll see you on the other side. So welcome. Get yourself settled. If you haven't gotten all your stuff together, run off and make sure that you have what you need. So you're going to find a way that you can sit comfortable. So again, many of you have been practicing long enough that you know what your seat needs to be. So let yourself do that. And once you've settled, just close the eyes first. Close the eyes and start to feel into your skin shell. Ease your mind into your mind. Start to notice whatever is going on. I don't care how you transition, whether you walk into a building, whether you change rooms, activities, it's really amazing, right? You can be, picture yourself sitting on a, on a couch or a chair and you're reading a book and all of a sudden you smell something burning and you remember that you had something on the stove and you drop the book and you shift quick. But in most cases, right, we have to arrive. It takes us a while to, to figure out. You go running into the kitchen, right, and you don't know where the spatula is or whatever. It's like you need to take time to not make that urgent transition. When you arrive, begin to slow. Watch your mind. As soon as your mind and your body are a little more settled than they were a minute ago, turn into your breath and again. Try not to do anything except notice where it's at. If you have an ujjayi practice, turn it on. So that ujjayi breath has that soft sound to it that the mind can attach to. And as you intentionally slow the breath, you will intentionally direct your mind. Now see if you can extend the exhale. See if you can easily draw in a full inhale. And then come back to, again, your body awareness. Does it feel centered? Does it feel tilted? Does it feel whatever? And then notice if you have, again, that, um, that inside thing that says whatever it is, it's probably wrong and you feel like you need to fix it. And see if you can let that impulse to fix, to change, to update, to modify, see if you can let that go. And just come to this place, that first yama, Ahimsa, that non-harming, that idea of self-love and thought, word and deed towards others and ourselves. And as you begin to still and get quiet, bring your attention right into your heart center and again, notice what's going on. Certainly, lately, there's been a lot of tension going on in my life, and so I can actually feel that right in my heart. And I don't need to figure out why or explain it or fix it or change it. What I need to do is honor it. And so let's once again begin with this, this breathing practice. We're going to go extended exhales. We're going to be, I'm going to give very few cues. You guys are mostly familiar with it, I think. It's going to be extended exhales, kapalabhati, short extended exhale, kapalabhati, and a kumbhak or two. And so go ahead and take in that long, slow draw in through the nose. Work on an open chest so the shoulders are wide, the shoulder blades are sliding down your back. Your skin is sliding down while your skeleton is sliding up. And when you get to the top of that inhale, pause for a moment, maybe two, three seconds, four seconds, and then go ahead and sip in a little bit more. 
try to, uh, try to relax the muscles that helped you get full and then squeeze them again, right? You need to squeeze these muscles to make the diaphragm, the ribs, the throat, the mouth, the neck open, get a little bit more air in. And for your forward fold again, hands on the earth, forward fold all the way down, blow it out of the mouth, five, six, eight times. Continue to blow out until you are 100% empty, then squeeze it out, pull the belly in a little tighter, press into the hands, contract the underbelly, contract the front ribs, contract the neck, throat, chin into the chest. Don't stay too long when you need some air, allow yourself to come up. The more you do this practice, what's going to happen is that it's very difficult at first, right? What's going to happen is you're going to start stretching open things that haven't been open. You're going to strengthen muscles that you haven't targeted before. And this practice is going to get bigger and stronger. So keep sipping it in, get that full inhale. And once you get as full as you can, again, roll the shoulders a few times, let them drop down the back. Sip in a little bit more air as the chest comes up. Just notice what's tight and then try to soften around that. Sip in a little bit more when you're able. A little more softening, maybe one little sip. And here we go. Keep trying to bring the crown of your head to the floor. Not your forehead, but the crown of your head. So really rounding the back of the neck, rounding the upper back, rounding the lower back as much as you can. When it's time to inhale, again, don't delay. Come right up on that slow inhale. But as you find that you have the ability to stay a little bit longer on the pause in between, that's really one of the places we want to arrive at or objectives that we want to aim towards. So again, inhaling, inhaling, inhaling until you cannot inhale any more than you pause on that end. Keep sipping and releasing, pause when it's time. When you know there's no more air to be had, pause. When it's time to release it, go ahead and spill it all out. Blow it out, blow it out, not passively, not softly, really big. Force the air out, squeeze the abdominal musculature to make it leave to engage the muscles, that serratus posterior, lowest serratus posterior muscle is helping to squeeze the ribs and squeeze the air out. Squeeze it, squeeze it round the back spine, contract the underbelly, squeeze, pause, maybe pull in the pelvic floor. And then when you inhale, come back just to a normal breath, let your hands sit in your lap. It's very often that people will begin to choke or feel some tightness in the throats as some of these, again, long ligaments, that, whether it's the ALL on the front of the spine, whether it's a ligament that connects the diaphragm to the pericardium or the pericardium to the throat. You will feel a choke, you'll have to cough. Stay with it and keep thinking that I'm lengthening this tissue because it really, really will lengthen. It will open you up. It will really open your breathing capacity. So in between, again, the extended exhales and the Kapalabhati, just pause, just wait, just drink in the experience. And when you're all set, let's begin a round of Kapalabhati or alternate nostril Kapalabhati, if that's your practice. Again, work on a straight spine, work on shoulders coming back, work on an open chest and a long neck. Here we go. Continue. So very often, again, I say this again and again, find your pace. You'll find that if you were hanging around with practitioners who've been doing this a long time, they seem really long, their shoulders are thrown back, their chest is wide open, the belly is pumping strong. That may not be right for you. Your focus is going to be long spine, open chest, and a full exhalation and belly contraction at the same time, your pace. If that means one every three seconds, one every five seconds, one every eight seconds, it doesn't matter. You find the pace that allows you to make that contraction, and then at some point, try to increase the pace. For 
10, for 9, for 8. It's just the count. Let your breath be what it is. Don't try to match your breath to the count for 4, for 3, for 2. Let the breath go. Leave your hands in your lap. What I will say is, as you increase your pace in the Kapalabhati, you will find that it has a profound effect on the nervous system. It will have a much more uh, strengthening effect on the heart and the lungs. But let it go and just notice what happens in the mind. One more extended exhale. Take in that big breath. If you've just worked your belly in different ways, you'll find that you'll be able to sip in longer inhales, maybe squeeze out longer exhales. So again, begin that process of slowly filling, relaxing, filling, relaxing, filling, relaxing until you're at your peak. When it's time to release, go ahead. On the inhale, just let your hands sit in your lap. I'm sure if you've already had breakfast or a meal, you've felt the thing that will say, I oughtn't do that the next time. Really, these practices should be done with an empty stomach. Again, a second round of Kapalabhati. About 20 more seconds, so do your best to stay with it. Watch how easy the mind wants to stop. So firm up your mental focus. If you have to lengthen, lengthen. If you have to hang back a half a beat or a half a count less, do it that little bit slower, but stay really firm in your resolve for four, for three, for two, and release. Hands in the lap. Notice. Be more interested in becoming a witness than doing anything. You find that you're upset about something, anxious, angry. Play with this practice. See if it helps clear the mind. And the last piece we'll do is the kumbhaka. So again, we're going to involve engaging the bandhas with much less breath than normal. So kids, stay with that long spine. Take the crown of the head straight up. If you'd like to take in a full breath first, just to oxygenate your body, go right ahead. But the next breath you take in, it's only going to be a third or a half of a breath. And on that inhale, again, you're going to start with your hands, palms open down low. Squeeze Mula Bandha. Begin the inhale. Draw it up as it passes your belly. Pull in the belly. Uddiyana Bandha. As it passes the throat, drop the chin. Jaladar Bandha. And then extend the arms, releasing the index finger high into the ceiling. Stay in your engaged position with your attention 
along the shushumna, or along the energy channel, from again in front of the tailbone, up the length of the spine, through the throat, out the crown of the head, maybe even right up between your fingers that are extending towards heaven. When it's time to release it again, the hands go first, the chin comes up, the belly releases, Muladharabandha releases, hands in the lap. And this breath will teach the mind, the heart, the nervous system, breath efficiency. The more you practice this, you'll find that you can stay longer without any agitation, without any urgency to leave. If you'd like to do a second one, go ahead again, engage in Mula Bandha, raising the hands, pull the bandhas in at the appropriate time, chest, chest comes up, chin comes down. Get rigid and long from the tailbone right up through the crown of the head and the fingertips. So you're engaging energy centers in the body intentionally containing the energy. And you're using the arms again to pull the length of the side body up. Ida Pingala, the two nadis in the side body that crisscross through the shishumna. And when it's time to release, again, the hands release, the chin releases, the belly releases, the bottom releases. Occasionally, just do this practice throughout the day, without the asana, just the pranayama practice. Begin practice, bring your hands into your heart center, bow your face towards your fingers, lay your thumbs right onto your sternum. And whatever's going on in your heart, pay attention to it. And whatever you need to attend to in your heart center, in your core, softness and energy, something that again needs addressing. Trust in the divine, by the way, it doesn't have to come from you. Your job is to listen. And then set an intention for your practice from that place. To maybe be, again, be energetic, or to be a little more soft. If you have a knee or a hip or a shoulder that needs some attention, again, practicing ahimsa on that side. So maybe you go big on one side and you go a little, a little softer on the other. And if you'd like to begin your practice with the sound of all taking in a breath. Um. And go ahead and open your eyes and find your way onto your onto your mat and come right into downward facing dog. Adobuka Shvanasana. no rush to get into the perfect pose. Be on a journey to just begin to explore your body in whatever way you need to explore your body. So I find that Adho Mukha Shavasana is one of those balancing poses. You can't favor too much the right side or the left side. It kind of comes into the middle. You can't favor the front or the back or the shoulders or the hips. What you'll do is, if your shoulders are tight or your hips are tight, you're going to find whatever your center is. And then go ahead and just move a little bit. Move your feet, move your hands, move your hips, move your shoulders. Just start to tie in whatever motion you choose with your breath. And if you want to move faster, I would suggest you slow down. If you notice your body is trying to go 100 miles an hour, come back into that breath practice you were just doing. Pick something. Maybe it's just the ujjayi breath that you began with. 
So ujjayi breath is an interesting thing. I'll say it this once. When you begin your practice, begin your ujjayi practice. And you don't stop until Shavasana. Shavasana is the time when we do no more breath control. But throughout your whole asana practice, throughout any vinyasa practice for sure, see if you can keep that ujjayi practice in motion. Bring your feet together on the center line. Inhale the left leg up just to be different, right? Get out of this habit of always doing the same one. And in that place, again, let's keep it closed. So point the toes straight down. Try to keep the hips level. Press out of that back heel. The bottom of the heel presses. And really squeeze, if you can, the back of the leg, the glute, whatever's going on back there. As much as you pull the toes up to your nose, as strong as you can pull the toes, that's also going to engage the front of the leg, that anterior tibialis and the lower front of the leg. And then go ahead and put that on the ground. Inhale the right leg up. And again, play with it. Are you in the left hand more than the right? The right hand more than the left? If you're even in both hands, can you draw both shoulders lengthening away from the wrists, creating maybe some space in the wrists? Big breath in, big breath out. Big breath in. Big breath out. Work on squeezing the quad, which will straighten that leg a little bit more. And then if you can intentionally, yet squeeze the glute, which is going to extend. You might even, when you squeeze the glute, what often happens is the glute max is often a, it's also a, an external rotator, so it may try to turn the toes out. And then go ahead and walk your hands back towards your feet. And you can either hang out with your fingertips on the ground. If you'd like to grab the back of the ankles, if that helps for you to get a little bit more leverage or lift out of the back, you can play with that. If you are an ankle grabber, play with bringing the nose or the forehead a little closer to the shin. Stay with that breath. Easy inhale. Easy exhale. Pulsing the legs by bending one knee, squeezing the other. So if you soften the right knee, for instance, squeeze the left quad, especially if you have the hamstrings that will allow you to do it. If your hamstrings are short, that may not be an option. You may just have a little bend in both knees, but try to straighten the one while softening the other a little bit more. And when you've done the left side, the right side, either once or twice at its time, go ahead and return yourself back to downward facing. that I do it this way all the time. 
And on the exhale, go ahead and bring that right arm on the knee. Squeeze you can get the elbow past the knee, the knee past the elbow. Really reach the forehead to the knee. Finish the exhale, squeeze, inhale, come back to the full extension. You're timing your motion with your breath. At some point, you may even begin to close your eyes so that this becomes a feeling practice. It engages the core, it requires a lot of balance, and then the full extension is the place where we watch where we really don't extend, right? We hold back 2% or 3%. You really want to get into your full place of extension, your full place of contraction. And one more full extension. And go ahead and put it all back on the ground. Press yourself back up into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing. Feet together on the center line, the right leg is going to come up. Open the hip if you wish, really and truly. Take some time to open the hip. So bending the knee, yep, swirling the hip. If you like circling ankles, go ahead and circle the ankles. Whatever it is that you need to do that makes it feel like I'm getting into my body, I want to go explore my hip, my side body. Do your best not to favor one arm. See if you can stay in both so that any rotation you get, again, comes out of the hips. Now that doesn't mean Always, right? I mean, obviously some rotation is going to come down through the ribs, the spine, into the shoulders, but know that and then negotiate that. Can I keep my shoulders and my arms square while I work my ribs, my side body, my waist, hips, knee? And then one time, knee the nose, squeeze it through. In that big end of power extension, bring it all the way back up one more time. We're going to go flying all three positions today. We're going to get that right knee to the right elbow, bring it forward, pause. Squeeze, press out of the left heel if you can. One time, big inhale, bring it all the way back up. And we're going underneath the body, so go ahead and bring that right knee underneath to the left elbow. Hang out there for a moment. Everybody wants to bail here, so to work on our brain more than anything, just slowly slide the right knee to the right elbow. And then back to the left elbow. Smile occasionally, bring it back to the right elbow. You can do that about 20 more times. Go right now, we'll just bring it straight up again. Big, giant, open the hip. Flip it as open as you can. You have to bend it. Maybe even scratch yourself behind the left ear with that right foot if you care to. One big, giant step forward is where we're going. High lunge on the right side. Get into your high lunge place on the right side. And again, if you need to get your feet a little bit wider to feel stable there, go ahead. Crescent warrior is coming, but make sure your feet are established first. So start to take some of the weight off of the fingers. If you need to work that left foot back a little bit more to get high on the toes, go ahead. When you're all set, take the weight off them completely, and then take the arms out wide, 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 bring them all the way up. Now right here, squeeze that left leg. So whether it's for the glute, the front hip flexors, the front, whatever you've got in that left leg, squeeze it. And here we go, just many people stay here. If you want a little extra juice, you can take that left knee, and we're just gonna go down and hardly touch the earth with it, and then come on back. We're gonna do that with our breath. So go ahead and just start playing with whether it's an inhale and exhale in your body, go ahead. I would try to descend on the exhale. And when you go down on this next time if you want, come down so you can just hover there. And without coming up any higher, just straighten the back leg and squeeze that left glute. Squeeze the quad, squeeze whatever you can on that side. We're going into a twist. Hands are going to come into the heart center. We're going to take the left elbow to the right knee. Don't worry so much about the twist here. Reestablish that back leg one more time. Squeeze it as straight and as long as you can. And then try to reach the crown of your head away from that back heel. If you stack the elbows, go ahead. See if you can just really truly work on the lengthening of the spine. If you're in your feet, if you're solid in your legs and you love it, stay there. If you have the ability to suck in your belly and rotate from the waist, go ahead. There are arm variations that many people may have available. If you have stuck or tight shoulders, they may not be. But that doesn't mean you can't rotate through the waist. If you have the ability to take your eyes up to the ceiling or around the back or somewhere else, feel free to do it. But stay with that long, easy breath. Keep squeezing out of the back leg. Turn your nose back to the ground, put your hands on the earth, walk yourself back into Skandhasana. And again, just back and forth a little bit, just loosening up both hips, left hip, right hip. We're going to do the power work today, so again, bend the left knee a lot, but not going down low. You're going to stay high, you're going to really reach into that right foot, squeeze that right quad, really try to stick your butt as far back as the low, flatten the back, try to point your palms towards the earth so the palms are flat. Go ahead and put your hands back on the earth, walk back into your high lunge. And step the right foot back. Inhale high, exhale. 
Exhale, go. Stay down here for a moment. Point your, point your toes. Let your toes touch. Get in the habit of doing this. If we're going to work on glutes today. What we really want to do is right here, press the tops of your feet, your toes into the mat, and absolutely squeeze your glutes. You can use the arms. You want to roll the shoulders back. You want to asymmetrically push the hands into the mat and pull the hands back, the elbows back, the shoulders back, but don't in all of that emphasis on the upper body, while you extend the heart forward, don't lose the legs. So squeeze the buttocks, press the feet into the mat for two. See how that feels, yes? One. <laughs> and then go ahead and soften them on the exhale, continue with the exhale all the way back into downward facing them. For three. So whether it's the quads, the back of the legs, the, in the, in the, the inside line of the legs, find the places where all of that gets some time to acclimate to the shape that you've just chosen. Play with it by pulling in the pelvic floor. Notice, does your tailbone point up, down, or straight back? You'd like it to point generally straight. Again, everybody's mileage may vary, but generally you want the tailbone pointing straight back. Let the back of the neck lengthen. Maybe that means the nose points down. And with no weight on the fingers, check your balance. If you're all set with that, both arms are going to come up big. And very often, this is plenty. Just staying in this pose. A static hold of this pose will do plenty. Intentionally, press into the front ball ridge on the left foot. Maybe sink the left hip down a little bit. Maybe invite the left hip to draw back slightly. Squeeze the right leg. If you're into the dips and you want to do that again, you just soften that right knee down, hardly touches, comes back. And you just find some way to breathe in your motion, right? If you find that you're clenching up in your neck, your throat, your voice, your breath, do something that allows you to ease into it. The next time you come down, stay down low. And then just straighten out that back leg, squeeze. Hands are going to come together to that prayer pose center line. Right elbow to the left knee. Squeeze that right leg straight again. Pull the belly in. See if there's any rotation that you get just out of that abdominal engagement pulling it in. Reach the crown of your head in the same direction that your hands may be pointing if they're in prayer position. Try to perhaps line up your sternum with your hands. So if all you do is hold this again, there's plenty going on, right? Plenty going on here. If you want more, again, you can wrap hands, you can extend arms. But find the rotation so the left ribs come back, the right ribs come under, your gaze may go up. Challenge yourself sometimes, balancing with your eyes closed. One more breath. Skandasana is coming, not yet. One more breath. Turn your gaze to the floor, put your hands on the earth, walk back towards that right foot. And again, bending one knee and then the other. So just oscillating back and forth, panther-like, I often say, cat-like, if you will. 
lubricating the joints, right? Getting to get out of whatever jam you just had them in. And then you're going to bend the right knee, straighten the left leg. You're going to leave it up high so the back gets flat, the palms face the earth. Reach and press into the outer edge of both feet, but especially the left. Press as if you're going to scoop up the earth with that left foot. What needs to be engaged here in the feet, in the groin, in the belly, in the arms extending? And what needs to soften maybe in the chest, right? As the back body squeezes, the front body opens. As the quads engage, the hands hopefully loosen. And go ahead and put your hands back on the ground, walk back to the front foot. Step that left foot back, inhale, high plank. Exhale, to the floor. Just as you did before, come into that core pose and squeeze. Foot four. Work on every little crown, every little piece, right? So you work on the belly. You work on the pelvic floor. You work on allowing the shoulders to get a little bit more open, even though the arms are isometrically pushing down. You're squeezing the muscles in the back, the upper back, the side body, open back. Extend or lift, press into the feet, squeeze. Finish the exhale, release it, pull it back into the downward facing. You're just going to extend it up. This time we're going to bend the knee. And all I want you to do is just press that right foot up. So let's take the right foot up first. We're just going to press that right foot up. See how much press you can get. So when it goes up there, now you can lift that, and it could be coming from somewhere, but intentionally squeeze that right butt as hard as you can as you press that up, and then soften a little. Squeeze, soften a little. Squeeze, soften a little. Two, soften a little. One, Go ahead and squeeze it, press, 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 like you're gonna put your foot on the ceiling, put that knee on the ground. Let's go to the other side. So knees are together, left leg comes and extends, and you just bend it, and again, it's just gonna be that left leg up. Left leg up. Left leg up. Left leg up. Rather than follow along, again, find a pace, but each time that you do it, notice if you're just going through the motions, or if once you extend it, you're really trying to squeeze and locate the musculature in between the top of that leg and your lower back. Make it fire. Many times what I find when I'm working with people, again, there's a firing order that you would love to have. People have lower back problems. What happens is you'd like to have the ham glute lower back opposite side fire. Instead what happens is the ham fires and the lower back fires next, the glute never fires. So those crescent warriors we were doing are excellent at teaching the glute to fire in the correct order. And go ahead and press yourself up into dolphin pose. So interlace your hands, forearms on the ground. Find a decent width of your elbows. When you're all set, curl your toes. Press yourself up into, there you go, dolphin pose. We're going to play that same game. So ekapada, left leg is going to come up. Squeeze. And just drop it all the way to the ground, touch your toes on the earth. Try to keep the legs straight when you do it. So all the way up and keep it all the way down. Good. All the way up. All the way down. All the way up. All the way down. 20, 30 more. That's all we do. 20, 30 more will be good. Last one is coming. Drop those toes to the ground. Bring the lat, bring that leg up again. One more time. Now squeeze everything. Dorsiflex the foot, straighten the legs. Squeeze your glute as strongly as you can. Go ahead and put that on the ground. Right leg's coming up. Same thing. Really just going to pulse it. Like you're lifting work weights, right? So while we focused on that, when we tried to focus on our minimal and donkey kicks, now we're really going to try to fire repeatedly, getting it in and out of the sequence. Hopefully this is going to make it work through its range. If you actually touch the toes on the ground, so if you keep your toes off as Jules is doing, it should stay fired. If you touch the ground, you might get it to release. I will tell you to go experiment in your own body and see what you feel, see what you think. And then on your final one, on your fifth one, or whichever you decide is your final one, lift it up and squeeze. Squeeze the leg, the quad, the thigh. See how soft? You want to make that leg like an iron bar. Like if someone were to touch it, it wouldn't move. When you're all set, put that on the ground. And then go ahead and press yourself up into down to face your job. Good two. For one. Walk your feet up to your hands. 
top of the mat, inhale to Ardha, Uttanasana, exhale forward, fold, big sweep of the arms all the way up. And again, release them all the way back down to the ground. Uttanasana, forward, fold, exhale into the floor, inhale, half leg. Exhale, put your hands on the mat, walk, step, jump back, high plank, inhale, high, exhale, up. inhale, squeeze while you're there. And then pull it back into the downward facing dog. For three. For two. For one. One more time. Rock your feet or jump up to your hands. Whichever way you do it to arrive at the top of your mat. Inhale halfway. Exhale to fold and fold. Inhale all the way up to the ceiling. Find foot extension here. Reach the arms up overhead. Grab hold of your right wrist. And then just this slight tilt, pull it by sticking on the right hip to the right and keep pulling on the right wrist, your hands go over towards the left. Work your breath so your breath stays really long and strong. And come on back up to center, switch grip on opposite wrist, press your left hips out to the left. Big breath in, big breath out. And then go ahead and hasta. <laughs> We're about to pass that one. Both hands are coming straight up to the ceiling and going all the way back down, forward, fold, all the way to the floor. Touch the mat, put the toss on us. As you come back up, put your toes be together. Sit down deep. If heels together work for you, if that's part of your practice, please do it. I would always say to yourself, you know, watch the place that we fall into just have it, right? See if you're actually making the choice to position your body in a way that makes sense or a way that you're going to go, you know what, I'm going to explore something different today. It's a chance that you might sit down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So you really want to find a vertical spine as much as you can. You want to be pitched forward, but depending on your bone shape, it depends on a whole bunch of things, how far are you going to go down. Try to lift the toes. Everybody come out onto your toes. So you come standing on your toes. And you might sit down deeper. And then come on back onto your heels. See if there's any way you can lift your toes up into the air. And then come on, roll forward in. Come on your toes, get your heels off the ground. For two. For one. Put your heels back on the ground. Sit down a little bit deeper. And let's just vinyasa. Inhale to a flat back. Extend the legs, extend the arms. Exhale, put your hands on the mat. Walk, step, jump back. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down to chaturanga, down dasana. Inhale into a back bend. You could be cobra or something else, but do the leg engagement, but squeeze. Keep it, linger in it for two. Work your breath even longer for one. Finish your next big inhale, and on the exhale again, loosen it, come out of it, deposit it, swing it back into downward facing dog. Bring your feet together on a center line, you have the right leg up. And when it comes back down, what I want you to do is I want you to put it on the opposite side of the left leg. So go ahead and put that down and walk your hands back to your toes. As you get back there, take some time to so get your toes symmetrically facing each other. More importantly, get your heels as far apart from each other as possible. And so for many people, they're not going to be as deep as Juliet is right here. So you might be a little bit higher. And in which case, again, your job is going to be just to stay curious. The back leg, we're usually working up in the glutes, in the DLRs, the deep lateral rotators of that right hip are what's going to feel it mostly. If you've got enough going on there, don't move, don't try to straighten it, don't do anything that's, uh, again, once you've got muscles on the load, you don't want to do anything big or sharp or sudden. What you want to do is come into your breath and stay here, maybe three, four, five, six breaths. But if you're at a place where you feel like it's really sweet, one thing you might do is just try to sway your hips a little bit to one side or the other. See if you can locate a place that makes you go, ooh, that place. Is there such a place in your hips, Jules, or not? Yes. Yes. At that place, again, find that place and then maybe hang out there for another one, two, three, four breaths. Soft breaths. Go to that place where, again, you try to lengthen the exhale. Maybe find the muscles in the neck, the face, the feet, the arms, things that don't have to be tight, that you're squeezing in sympathy. 
Let's see if you can soften those. And then the final piece that you might be able to unwind something there is softening both knees even more. Bringing your face a little closer to your shin or your feet. And that's about as deep as you're going to go here. Stay with whatever you've got. And if you're in a sweet place again, don't try to keep up with anyone else. Fall into that place that goes, no, this is heaven. This is what my body needed. Once you've had enough, come back into your breath. And then on an inhale, start to walk your hands forward. You're going to come back into that ekapada, but you're going to get your hands all the way to the front of the mat first. When you're all set, again, anchoring yeah, the left foot, the right leg comes all the way up. Uh, right, all the way up. Shake it, swing it, swirl it. Shake it like it's a dish towel with crumbs in it. I mean, really, truly shake it and then put that foot on the ground. Yep, inhale the left leg up. Same thing. Get it up in the air as high as it's going to go. As if you're going to pull it out of the hip. And then go ahead and let it descend behind. Yep, the other foot. Go ahead and walk your hands back one more time. Once you get back, again, the idea is that the, the toes can face each other. The most important thing you can do is try to separate your heels. Get them grounded. So some people, again, not, uh, you know, if I have short hamstrings, I'm, I'm going to be a lot more upright. Wherever you end up, stay in the place where you're just approaching it. You do not want to do extra pulling or pushing in this shape. You want to simply approach the tension and begin to soften your breath and your awareness around that spot. Give it a breath or three or five or eight simply to start to change deeply. I mean cellularly, myofascially, atomically perhaps. There are people who will tell you again that the uh, telomeres at the end of the RNA DNA actually change with stress. So if you can start to just soften your mind. If you want to make any adjustments with your feet, if you say, oh, you know what, my heels can go wider now and you're in. It's appropriate, right? Don't do it because I suggest it. I mean if it's appropriate. And if not, find that little swirl with your hips where you go, oh no, that's the place, right? You can lift them up higher, you can scoot them down a little bit. Once you feel free, again, the final piece of this is going to be softening both legs and bringing your face a little closer to your shins or the front of your legs. When you get there, recognize that you are deep. And you don't want to stay long and you don't want to exit quick. You want to stay with your breath. You want to really be deep in your experience of what's enough or what's needed. And when you decide you've had enough, turn on the inhale and start to let the hands walk back out into your downward dog place. You're going to release again that back leg back up to the ceiling and shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And then go ahead and put it on the ground. Lift your toes high, come all the way forward into high plank. And then slow motion five count, we're just going to lower ourselves down to the floor. So five, stop bending the elbows. Four, you decide what you want your own. When you're about three, about halfway down, go ahead and find your knee. The idea here is always just to have a bailout from your pose, to always be mindful and in control of your mind and your body. I'm going to play with up dog here. So go ahead and bring your hands back, maybe under your shoulders, maybe back by your ribs. Roll the shoulders again a couple of times. So it's by your ears, down your back, and fold them down your back. And once you're all set, you're going to come into it. So when you do, you, you come up, you try not to brace out of the arms. Bring your chest all the way back up. When you're up, the thighs come off of the mat. You're in your toes. You're going to squeeze here. You're going to continue to try to open the heart across the front. If you love the idea of lifting the chin or opening the throat a whole lot more, again, the styroid, parathyroid stuff that can stretch or change in there, work with the legs more than anything here. See if there's any way, again, that you... If so, again, my bendy flexi people, I want them to micro-bend the arms. I want them to get a little bit more strength in the muscle tissue. If you are all bound up in your arms and you can't straighten them, then go ahead and try to see if you can find something like a lockout position. And then go ahead and lower yourself back down to the floor. Turn your chin to the right. Relax. Let go. You can have your hands by your side. You can make a pillow with your head if that makes sense. Shake. 
Shalabhasana, bring yourself back to center. Sweep your hands back toward your feet. Palms towards the earth. And then go ahead and let the hands come up. Let the chest come off the ground. Let the legs come off the ground. Everything comes up. Keep reaching with this. So again, you decide, once again, what can I squeeze in the back? If we want to target glutes in this class, really, truly, try to, in your back bend positions, try to squeeze the glutes. Gluteus maximus, again, is a leg extensor. It will extend that leg. What it will also do at times, depending, is it's also an external rotator. So it may start to pull your toes out to the side. You're going to try to play with squeezing for the extension for two. Get the arms up a little bit more for one. Bend your elbows, make a pillow for your head, put it on the ground, turn your chin to the right. So you can go one side and the other side, and then one side and the other side. When you are in the release place, don't anticipate what's next or how long they're going to be here. Truly, let it go. Bring the awareness back to the breath. Conscious awareness traveled the body. What just happened? It had an effect. Feel the effect. And bring yourself back to center one more time. Sweep your hands back towards your thighs. Palms down. Put your hands under your thighs. Some people will do this more easily than others. You're going to hear, you're going to put your forehead or your chin on the ground. You're going to press into your hands, forehead, or chin. And you're going to lift that right leg up without taking the hip too far up. You're going to try to get that straight leg. So again, one more blue squeeze here. You more of a squeeze with a toe point or a, or a dorsal flexion of this. Do I get more? Um, what squeeze? Probably a little halfway, yeah. halfway the dorsal flexion. Yeah. Some people may find there's a big distinction between the two. Some people may not. It really depends on your back line tension. So go ahead and let that get a little longer, more than bending the knee. If there's any way you can take the bend out of the knee, it would be like squeezing the quad. Yeah, that. And that's going to get a little bit more into that back leg, right? Squeezing that quad, get a little bit more press. So just for fun, go to flex the press the heel out. Squeeze the quad. That leg right there. There's a lot more length out of that leg right there. A little more press, a little more lift. And go ahead and put it on the ground. No delay. Take the other one up, same thing. Yep. Love that. Yep, yep. I think you've got the I'm not going to bend my knee thing going on now. Just go ahead and just press out of it, squeeze that, get into the breath, so the bigger the inhale, the bigger the exhale. And go ahead and put that on the ground. Roll your hands out from under your hips. Turn your head to your first position, so I think that was right. Again, truly letting go, truly just turning off anything. If you want ujjayi breath, use ujjayi breath. If you want to let that go in terms of it's time to release, absolutely release. Come back to center. You know, the, big, the big kahuna. You're going to bring your hands back underneath your thighs. You're going to bring your hands to your, your, your face or your chin to the floor. You're going to work on a big inhale and a big exhale. I really want you to work on a couple of huge inhales, huge exhales. You want to oxygenate the body. Again, your muscles are going to want oxygen. They don't care what you ate or how much you rested. They need oxygen. That's what's going to make these muscles fire. And when you're all set after one breath, maybe on your third inhale, I want you to press into the hands and lift. Maybe you bring the toes together unless it crowds the back. But you lift the legs up as strong as you can. You squeeze your buttocks. You squeeze your hips. Everything squeezes into the center line, the lower back, the hip points, the SI joints for two. One more lift for one. Go ahead and put them on the ground. Turn your head again to the left. And truly let go. The hands out from underneath the thighs, palms can face in a neutral position, probably up. Bend your knees and plant yourself onto the floor. So all I do is just, again, get your head and shoulders up. If you like reaching with one hand past the knee, you can reach.
sweeps the right hand past the left, and the left hand past the right. And again, all we're doing here is just seeing how the body feels about this motion, right? We've just done back bend, back bend, back bend, right? So all we're doing now that we've right, opened the front body some is we're just seeing how the back body feels about moving in a different way after you've contracted it, contracted it, contracted it. And if you move to the left and the right, and the left and the right, and the left and the right, and everything feels like it's all right, go ahead and put your head and your shoulders back on the mat. If you want to move the soup to Baddha Konasana, go ahead. So it doesn't become about racing to the next pose or racing to the next pose. Much more intelligently, what it's doing is it's engaging the body, letting it go, engaging the body, letting it go. You could take that another step and it's saying, choosing to do this and then choosing to do that. You could say engaging the sympathetic nervous system and then turning on the parasympathetic nervous system. But we do it with control, we do it, again, with an authority over ourselves, rather than just being yanked around. Shiva rides Nandi the bull, and Nandi the bull in Hindu practice is often referred to or, or, or associated with the emotions. The emotions just yank us around. Let's do fast bicycles, just to again build something up. So you're going to come into fast bicycles. So right elbow hits the left knee. You can find whatever speed is appropriate for you. You can find whatever goes on. So we are doing our whatever I feel like doing. But now I'm going to ask Juliet to touch that right knee to the right elbow as she does it. So keep the same speed, but really, truly, no, opposite side, yeah. Yeah, and see if you can really touch it. So a little bit more goes on there. And then if you wanted to do a little bit more, you can take the extension leg and really just tap the floor with it while you do it. And then we're just going to slow it down. So we're just going to go slower and slower for three, for three, for two, for two, for one, for one. Put it on the ground, release, relax, let it go. Absolutely let it go. Stomach stirrings, get your fingers in there and again. Find the tight stuff, loosen it, move it, stir it up. You have sheets of collagen. Linear rafe, there are different sheets, the bottoms of the ribs. Again, that are attachment places for the abdominal muscles, the obliques, the transverse abdominis. Last one, we're going to do just a few four-part sit-ups. Um, so we're going to grab a block, we're going to stick it right between our thighs. Yep, the groin of the knee is a great place to go. And take your feet off the ground, the legs are going to be uh, hopefully the lower legs are going to be parallel to the ground. We're going to take our head and shoulders off the ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up. So if you'd like to press your, your heels up to the ceiling, you can do that. If that puts strain on your lower back or in any way, you know, it's just tough, keep your knees bent. Other than that, you're going to come straight up to the center. You're going to bring the right elbow to the left knee. You're going to bring the left elbow to the right knee. You're going to come back up the center and squeeze that block, release a little bit. So it's going to be up, rotate, Rotate, up, squeeze, release. Up, rotate, rotate, up, squeeze, release. So when you come up, it doesn't matter which side you rotate to. Go ahead, just keep your own rhythm going. But what you want to do is just change it up every now and then, right? You come up, maybe you rotate to the right this time, the left this time, up the middle, squeeze, release. Maybe go up and to the right the second time. Find something that keeps your mind occupied and interested. If you're using straight legs and you find that your legs soften, maybe you come down to soft knees. If you find that with straight legs you're just not giving it the effort, then concentrate on keeping the legs straight. Last one, we're going to come up and pause, 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 rotate right, pause, 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 rotate left, pause, 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 straighten your legs, squeeze them, come back up the middle, squeeze and let's pulse, 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 three, 
two, breathe, one, go ahead and bend your knees, lose the block, put everything on the floor, hip shoulders, everything. Really, truly let go. If the hips are on the floor, if the shoulders are on the floor, let the belly melt into the floor, right between the hips and the shoulders. Fully breathe into the belly. Again, putting your fingers into the belly, smart idea, may not be for everyone. Go ahead if you're, again, feeling tension underneath the rib set. Get your fingers in there as deep as you can. Make little circles. I strongly recommend clockwise circles and a clockwise motion. In other words, if you put your fingers in at 2 o'clock, stir clockwise. And then if from 2 o'clock, you put your fingers at 3, stir in a clockwise motion. And then the next one would be at 4 o'clock, stir in a clockwise motion. So the little motion, the little circles are clockwise, and the large motion you're making is also clockwise. Spinal rocking. Go ahead and bend your knees, grab them from behind. Go ahead and rock. Left side, right side of the spine. Take three, four, five rocks each side. So that's maybe eight or ten rocks, right? And we go back and forth, back and forth. Once you're all set, then you pop up to the top of the mat and continue with Surya Namaskar B. Big inhale all the way. Exhale all the way back down to the floor. Touching the mat, Utkatasana, come on back. Bring your hands into the center. I'm going to take that left elbow to the right knee. So, Parivrita Utkatasana, we're going to twist it. Yeah. So every time that left knee wants to run forward, again, you can decide, is it appropriate to try to draw it back, right? Sit down deep, keep playing with that idea. If you're trying to draw that left knee back, again, you're really working that hip and that SI joint, typically. The twist that you're getting if that knee is forward is really from, it's a compensatory move, right? Let everything else roll or slide forward. So throughout the idea that you need to do it right and wrong, you're getting the knowledge of, oh, I see what's happening there. What if I bring it back? Do I feel it in a different place? For two. Sit down a little bit deeper, maybe extend the spine a little bit more. Can the left ribs come underneath? Can the right ribs roll back? Can you soften something while sitting down just a little deeper? One more time, stay with the breath. Nose goes to the floor, hands go to the floor. Right leg comes straight up into the air, standing split right side. So if you don't have a full Standing split practice, I strongly recommend bent knees. Bent knees will allow you to get your knees further away from each other on almost every single body. And that's, again, where you start to say, oh, that's where the restriction is, right? And that's where the restriction is here. If we wanted to work on hamstrings or other stuff, we could do some other poses. But for this one here, just press that up one more time. And again, does squeezing the glute set, this BLA set staying neutral, does squeezing the glute set that an ability that will help extend the leg, the knee a little higher. And then go ahead and put the high foot down near the low foot. Go ahead and walk yourself back into high plank. But Vashi Stasana, what we're going to do, we're just going to pulse in and out of Vashi Stasana. So instead of making it um, a long hold to start with, we're just going to pulse one hand up, then the other hand up. It makes it so that you can kind of feel when you're going right side or left side. It warms up the shoulders. If you don't want to pull Vashi Sasana once we do it, so we'll do it one more on one side and one more on the other side. We're going to vinyasa to it and we're going to come back to it. So come back to high plank. Exhale your way down. Inhale your way back into downward facing dog. For three. So if you come through Vashistasana one more time, again, we do a longer hold, but you can always do a wild thing. You can change it to something different. And go ahead and come high on your toes, look between your hands, walk, step, jump to the front. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold, fold. Big sweep of the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Garu Dasana is coming. Keep your arms overhead. Just squat down into the Katasana. And from here, bring your eagle arms. So take the arms out wide to the T. Let's take the left arm under the right. Left arm under the right. And you're already in your squat position. So take that left knee high up into the air and make 
make sure you maintain your balance. And then go ahead and drop it over the top. You decide now, yep, the cross toes can absolutely be on the ground. It takes out the vicious balance out of it, right? It allows you to maybe sit a little bit more, or play with the rotation of your hips. So maybe your right hip comes forward a little bit more. Maybe you sit a little deeper. Maybe you can play with the squeeze of the elbows in the front body or the squeeze of the shoulder blades in the back body. Lift the elbows just so that they might be at shoulder height. See if that has an effect that's interesting in your practice. What happens if you squeeze or pull the hands in different directions out in front of your face? The two. When you come out, big flurry, big, big wide open release. And then exhale, forward and fold all the way back down to the mat. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hands to the earth, walk, step, jump back. Rashi Sasa with the hold this time if it's appropriate. Bring your right hand into the center. And then go ahead and flip yourself onto the side of the foot. Yep, maybe you stack your feet. The left arm comes up. So remember, Vashi Sasana has the essence of a back bend. You don't want to pull your chest forward. You really want to open the chest and maybe off of the hips forward just a little bit before. Squeeze the legs if you have that. It's again one more place where you can squeeze the back body. The biggest breath you've got, the longest extension you've got. If you want to move me, this would be a place to raise that left leg in the air. But for right now, I'm just going to have a stand to the pose. So the legs can come back together. That left hand can come down to the ground. Put it across the other side. Put it vinyasa to the other side. Exhale your way down. Inhale, come on all the way back. For two. High your shoulders. Places that you can play here, right? Is if the knees are bent, you're just really truly going to see how much separation you can get between the knees. You're going to keep pressing that, that high foot up towards the ceiling. You can always keep trying to work the face a little bit closer to the shin. If there's a balance component that you like to play with, one hand can grab the standing leg and keep the other hand kind of as a kickstand to see what happens. And if you're, again, loving the balance of things, you could always bring both hands to the standing foot while you continue to try to press the high foot to the ceiling for two. For one. Let the high foot come down and meet the low foot. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hands back down, walk, step, jump back. Vashi Sasana to the other side. Go ahead and bring the left hand to the center. Find your rotation, stack your ankles, stack your feet, squeeze the legs. Once you're all set again, what you really want to do here, it's important that you lift off of that standing arm. No sagging into the standing arm. You want to engage and press out of the heels of the feet. The hips want to come forward just enough. You want to find some length in between the, the pubic bone and the notch of the sternum. Find some length there. As much opening as you can from one shoulder side to the other. A big inhale. Again, if the Lifting the leg, the glute medius thing is all part of what you love to do. You go ahead. If it's not, keep that leg closed. For one last breath, go ahead and drop that foot back down. Find your way out of the pose. Go ahead and finish that vinyasa. Come back into downward facing dog. And then pull yourself onto your 
Conscious awareness is a very, very unique thing to the human condition. Did an experiment with, uh, with monkeys. They took a, a nut and they put one under a yellow cup and they put nothing under the red cup. And they did it again and again and again. And pretty soon the monkey just always looked under the yellow cup and knew that's where the nut was. And then they started putting it under the red cup and the monkey still would pick up the yellow cup because that's what it had learned. In the same way, what they did was they gave a, a, a slightly complex lock to one monkey, and the, the monkey worked through it, worked through it, worked through it, and then finally figured out how to open it, and there were three other monkeys watching the monkey do it. They were isolated, but they could watch, and they were curious. And then they gave the lock to the other monkeys, and they couldn't open it. They had to have their own experience, whereas humans, our consciousness, our ability to watch others and learn is part of what makes us unique. To watch yourself is a thing that makes us really unique. You've had enough on the one side. If you if you thought, okay, I'm here, you know, it's like, all right, play with rotating right or rotating left or really letting the chest move closer to the ground. Something that finds you into your my body has opened up a whole bunch. Let me find this one other place that I haven't visited and keep in the breath cycle. Big breath in. So you're moving again, intentionally you are moving prana, you're moving awareness through the shoulders, through the back, through the legs. Shoulders open the heart, 
press it to the foot, squeeze that left leg, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And again, if the rock left and right helps you integrate or feel like something's going on in the hip, SI joint, pubic synthesis, any of the hip stuff that needs to move to make that work. And then once you're all set, go ahead and walk yourself down into that long spine location. Keeping the energy in the legs, keeping the energy in the hip, keeping the energy in the spine, the chest. Even if your eyes are closed, there is energy behind your eyes that's keeping the posture alive. Numbers are arbitrary. Use numbers just to once again distract the mind, give it an idea. Your job is to redirect, to hear this background noise, right? And eventually in your practice, hopefully, all of the people, places, and things that make up the flurry of activity in your life simply become background noise. And you attach again to this inner self, this inner voice, this inner knowing that guides what it is you're doing here on the planet. Finding that ujjayi breath. When you find that your mind has run off and you're not moving energy into the feet, you come back and you reintroduce your awareness to everything about yourself. You feel the vibration in your hands, your belly. And if it's time to move a little deeper, go ahead. Again, establish the, the left leg one more time. Engage the belly. Maybe let your chest go a little bit lower. Again, rock the hips to one side or the other. You go explore the stuff, realizing that left and right are very different. Right? What this was yesterday, it may not be today. What it was on one side during the practice may not be the same on the other side. And at some point, let go. That doesn't mean mentally check out. It means stop doing. You've done it. It's opened. It's strengthened. You've pushed it. It's time to recover. It's time to be in whatever it is you've created. At some point, the artist steps back from the canvas and just looks. Admire whatever it is that you've created without judgment. All breath. Turn your breath on a little bit more fully. With your brain on, consider what it is you need to do to come out of this pose. If you're going to release on a knee or if you're going to release in full like a pot, choose before you arrive. And then in as few moves as possible, as possible, efficiently find your way into your next location. So you waste no energy. You choose intelligently. You begin to express your fullness as you show up. Not as an afterthought. I'm going to play with two more poses here. So we're going to do a small twist. So if you need to elevate the hips, you just got to elevate them somewhat. And let's pull the left hip in a little bit closer first, as if you're going to sit on that left heel. And then you're going to decide whether. The right knee bends in front or over the top of that left hip. You want to try to have both sit bones even. So if both sit bones, if you're on a block, both sit bones ought to be on the block. If you're tilty, maybe put a blanket on the block as well to take up some of the slack. So we're going to be twisting to the right. So what I want you to do just for now, you, you can, if you have that wrap again that you can get the whole arm around and go ahead. If you're uh, tilting, you want to get the elbow into the knee. Just stay upright with both shoulders rolled back and the hand on the knee. So it's left hand on the right knee. Roll the right shoulder back and then sweep that arm. Maybe get the right hand right near the tailbone into the earth. Go for the straightest spine you can. So really sink both sits bones into the block. Release the back of your neck to the ceiling. And just for fun, let's bring our chin over the left shoulder. So the chin goes to the left shoulder, the other left shoulder. Go to the left shoulder. I did opposite to mirror the camera. We're going, we're going there in a minute. Go to the left shoulder. And then just from the belt, as if you're going to bring your belt buckle to the right, go ahead and find that little bit. Come back to 
you will do in the workshops where we start doing upper twist first, and we don't know this far, and we start unwinding it from the bottom to the top, and all of a sudden everybody's like an extra 180 degrees around, and that's really the game. I want your head out of the equation most days. We think we're twisting, but we're just turning our head. One more big breath. Any other lengthening that you need to do? Any finer twisting? If it's the eye that you want, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and unwind, unwind, unwind. Let's do a seated. <laughs> what am I thinking of? Apanasana. <laughs> I just give it a squeeze. Push your forehead on your knees if possible. Again, not possible for many, many of us. Give it a good squeeze, squeeze your butt. And this. And come on back up. Again, we're going to bend that right knee as if you're going to sit on that right heel. Get yourself back on your block or your seat or whatever it is that you do. And again, the left knee can either come over the top or it can stay in front. Either way. Go find what your body wants to do it again. Right hand's going to go on that left knee. I'm going to bring my chin over the other side. So my chin's going over the right shoulder. I'm twisting to the left. So work on lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. And then at some point, just think about the belt buckle or your left hip point just comes over a little bit. So the left hip point swinging to the back. In doing so, as you curl forward, again, lift the heart. And if that means the left uh, hip point movement again, get both going. Get the heart coming up to the left hip point going back. Just notice where that tension comes from in the body. Before we go any further, sweep your left hand behind you. Anchor it into the mat somewhere near your tailbone. See if that helps you get a little longer. I'm going to take the left ribs back a little bit. Keep lengthening. So big inhale, ground down. On the exhale, lift the back of the skull up. Exhale, back of the skull lifts. Keep drawing that left knee towards the center line. And one more time, take the left shoulder back. You can use the arm as a lever if you wish. Right shoulder comes around with it. And now go ahead and release your chin all the way over to the left shoulder. Really let it go. Don't get caught up in the turn without the lift. So get the lift and the lengthening and the grounding first. Then find whatever rotation you can. You can use the hands as gentle levers, not as cranks, but two. Biggest breath you've got. Taking the biggest inhale you've got. One more rotation. Exhale. Next biggest inhale you've got. Find a little bit more rotation. Pull on the knee. And then go ahead and unwind your head, unwind your shoulders, your ribs, your belly. Close your practice. Let's find an inversion. Shoulder stand with a blanket. And just go back. I'll just throw it underneath the, the mat so that people can. Uh, I guess we can call a shoulder stand? Yeah, just a. Here you go. Just like so most other people. Yeah, you can just, but you can do it because it's not your side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I thought. I just, I'm, I'm a two blanket person. Yep. 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 If you're ever in a studio, what's wonderful here, again, you're going to have to take your sweaty self. Um, you put the mat on top of it, or you slide the blankets under the mat, and uh, you'll get the sticky benefit and the support of the blankets. So just to point it out, again, shoulders are going to come up high, so you're really on the edge. And then go ahead and find your way up. Your hands are going to be on the ground. Uh, your back, your elbow will be on the ground, typically, yep. Yeah. Legs are going to come up. You support yourself with your hips. If you find that that jams your thumbs in any way, if you're jamming them in the back of your body, Jules doesn't have that issue. She hardly has to use her hands to support her hips. If you do, you might use fists or some other way so that you're not just taking uh, the body weight into your thumbs. You might find some other configuration to support the ribs or the hips. Inversions, again, I would suggest somewhere between 10 and 20 breaths upside down. At 
some point, play with the idea of drawing things into the center line. Finding that balance between dominant engagement and lift. Once you've done your 10 or your 20 breaths, you find your way out to move into Shavasana. Shavasana today, so if you're practicing at home, please stay a whole lot longer. So Shavasana again, no Ujjayi breath. You let go. You come to that place where you can just allow the neutrality of gravity and the pressure of underneath the floor. In other words, if the floor was pressing more than, more than gravity, you'd be going up into the air, right? If gravity was stronger than the floor, it would push you right through the floor. There's always this evenness that takes place. Nature is always striving for balance. Inside of your skin shell. What we've trained our minds to do, most of us, up until this point in time, is when we give it a focus like the skin shell, we lose track of everything else. So, can you notice all of the other sounds around you, outside of your skin? It could be wind or birds, things happening in your home, switches, lights, air exchanges. What can you notice inside of your skin shell and outside of your skin shell? And again, letting go. There's no ujjayi breath. There's no breath control. And the purpose then is to control the mind. If we start doing the higher practices of yoga, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, Without moving, come back to your breath. And again, connecting strongly to your breath, preparing your mind to move. At some point, in the next breath of three or five, at some point, when it seems right, when it feels right, 
makes sense for you to keep your eyes closed, I would invite you to do so. If you need to open and do anything that makes you more comfortable, slowly find your way up to a seated position once again, again maybe with the eyes closed. Find your meditation seat. Take a few moments to feel or notice the effects of your practice, your asana practice. And hopefully again, you are practicing some niyama. Niyama. your right hand right on top of your heart. Put your left hand on your right. If anything remotely like joy in you or your practice, let it start to leak into your face. Let your heart smile, let your face smile, let your belly smile. Continually check in with your heart. Notice what's happening inside. Don't get lost in just the five senses. If you'd like to set an intention again for the rest of your day, take a moment and just feel into that space. Don't try to make it happen. Feel weight. some inner knowing simply occurs. Leaving your hands right there, part of this yogi, part of this connecting everything, your voice, your thoughts, your breath, your practice, feeling that vibration that makes up all of it. If you'd like to join the sound of all, leaving your hands right on your chest, taking a breath. Thanks, John.